What's up, what's up, what's up, boys and girls? I'm Plant Powers, and this is Night Call. Today we're gonna be playing a game developed by Monkey Moon and Black Muffin, published by Raw Fury. Uh, it tells a story, or rather, it's a investigative noir game. It's a non-linear and narrative-driven story, where we play as this uh, taxi driver who survived this uh, serial killer's uh, attack and we have seven nights to figure out where, how, or who this uh, serial killer is, or the police is gonna pin, pin it on us. Uh, we don't have any special abilities, we just talk to people, or we have a very good skill of talking to people as we are a taxi driver, and uh, from here we conduct our investigation. I can't wait to start this game, it looks amazing. I've been following this for uh, a while now, and I can't wait. Oh wait, let me just disconnect my controller. All right, I'm gonna be playing with the keyboard. Let me just uh, check the resolution. Let me just change this. Oh, I can't. Yes, I can. Okay, particle sync off. All right, like that, and let's get ready to rumble. What's a passy dex? Not sure what that is. Oh, it's just like a collectibles. Okay. Alright, uh, there's no... Okay, there's general options. Yep. Yeah. Audio, all good. Alright, let's get into it, shall we? Bum, bum. Alright, here we go. Okay, so we can choose the investigation. The judge, the angel of death, the sandman. Let me just check. Victims all have something in common and the motives seem clear, but which suspect could have done it? Balanced case, perfect for a first run, okay. We have the Angel of Death, random victims, unknown motive, weird case, slightly more difficult than the others. Uh, the Sandman, the victims may fail, fail random at first, but there's a connection, yet the motives might be hard to find. Dark and twisted case. The prize investigation, the game will randomly pick an unsolved investigation, okay. And we have random investigations between all of them. Alright, let's start with the judge, since it's the perfect for the first run. And we want to story. Money will be easy to get by, the investigation will be easier. Every action will take less time for a chiller experience. The way Night Call was designed, balanced, and hard. Money will be tighter, the investigation will be harder to solve. Every action will cost more time for a more challenging experience. Alright, let's go with balanced, since it was the way... It was designed. Alright, the judge. Here? Sir, can you hear me? Or do I have need to speak up? Uh, I can't hear at all, I, I can read it, but okay. Uh, uh, you're fine, I guess. She takes a deep breath. Sir, just spent two weeks in a coma. The world bounces around your head. You need a moment to understand its meaning. Coma? The word scratches along your throat. Yes. You were the victim of an assault. The word resonates in your head. Victim. You are aware a serial killer is currently on the loose in Paris. 
you feel the contents of your stomach crawling up your throat. The judge, as the police called the killer, assaulted you. The bullet touched your liver and, in most circumstances, it would have been fatal. We choose to put you in an induced... Her voice becomes more distant, fades. Your taste bile at the back of your mouth. Your head is burning. You hear a whistle in your one ear. Your fingers move to your wounds. Underneath the bandages, you can feel hard skin. It is incredibly painful. Did I... I'm sorry? Did I catch the, du the judge? No. Uh, what about the cops? What about the pan... Oh, what about my... I had a passenger? Okay. He was dead before you even got out of your cab. The doctor is silent for a second. A very awkward second. She hesitates. The police would like to see you as soon as possible to ask you some questions. After all, you're the only one who survived the judge. Noise in the hallway attracts your attention. You try to turn your head to no avail. You need to rest. She leaves the room. Her voice resonates in the hallway. I don't care. The only witnesses is another female join a uh, female voice joins in a stronger author authoritarian voice can't clearly make up what she's saying a strange feeling washes over you it's not pain not fatigue an odd combination of the two before being in the, in this hospital room you never realized that hunger was made up of a combination of pain and exhaustion anger feeling you know all too well. Days go by and a month later... Alright, so, just survived the attack. A month later we're out of the coma and we talk to our boss. Well, look, I've got a bit of a problem. A real problem, that is. You have a pounding headache. It's your first night behind the wheel since since the attack. Are you listening to me? You catch your boss's eye in the rear view mirror. Uh... Yeah, sorry. Oh, I just want things to get back to normal, to clear my head, to stop thinking about it all. He's watching you closely, trying to make out what's going on in your head. You know, I'm worried about you, don't you? I know. You're like a son to me, you know? I know. And you know he's about to tell you the story of his taxi fleet. Again. When my father died and left me the store, I could have sold it. I could have retired, gone back to the old country. But I decided to start a cab fleet with the money he left me, to hire the guys from the neighborhood. And that's why I've got 45 guys like you working for me. His hands flutter in the air. Though none of them are any match for you. He smiles. His voice suddenly takes on a serious note. Do you want to go over everything again? He points to the equipment on the dashboard, the meter, the GPS. You haven't been in a taxi for weeks. Maybe you do need a little refresher. Uh, yeah, sure, that's a good idea, because i never been a taxi driver, so... Right then, well, first the map, spot potential customers and try to guess where they'll be going, then you decide. When a customer orders a taxi, there's no one else around, you have to go pick them up. He shrugs. That's the way it goes, it's business. Alright, no problem. The other fares, you look at the map and decide whether or not you want to take them. And then... You drive. He flashes a quick, mechanical smile. You know it well. When he talks about work, he talks about work. That's all. When your shift is over, we do the numbers and... His, trail, his voice trails off, as if searching for the right words. And that's all. It's pretty simple. There's no reason why you can't do it. Oh, right. No overtime. We're in France here, and there, there are rules, regulations. 
You might not see it that way, but no one likes having a driver who has, hasn't slept for 24 hours. He looks away, something's been bothering him since he got into the cab. Anyhow, you know the ropes, you get it. I know you're going to do a good job. Uh, what's the matter? Your boss keeps quiet for a while, as if he's hesitating to speak, and then... I don't think it's a good idea. You shouldn't be driving. The murderer is still out there, and we think he's going to come back for you. Yeah, that's a very good uh, hypothetical, yep. Yeah. Uh, me? He doesn't know who I am. Uh, he knows you. Your taxi driver, though. Maybe memorize the license plate? Uh, we? Your colleagues. I do too. Anyway, I'll let you get back to work. Every minute spent in your taxi is a minute lost. He gives you a smile, half ironic, half serious. Uh, you can... Uh, have a good evening. The sarcasm in his voice is palpable. Right, you have a good evening too. He'll spend the rest of the night dealing with problems and drivers. You wonder how and when the guy ever gets any sleep. Your boss opens the door and exits the cab. You watch him cross the street and enter the fleet car garage. A couple of colleagues are milling about. Taxis are coming and going. They all ignore you, consciously or unconsciously. You are branded. You sit there a moment, then turn the key in the ignition. The hum of the engine sends a tingle down your spine. Impossible to describe how you missed that feeling. It's back to the night shift, back to life. Despite the attack, despite it all. Alright, so here we go. I think we're actually playing right now. So we have a few fares we should be picking up. This one is really far by. Let's go to the closest one. Uh, it kind of looks like it's this guy. Just go to him, shall we? So we have 327 euros. Uh, I'm not sure what's that. So, Sony Talpa, it's the guy. We can accept or refuse his fare. Uh, this will cost him 12 euros, 0.09, or four and a half, almost four and a half kilometers. Our gas tanks, gas tank, uh, gas tank is full, and I'm not sure what's this number up here. Is it the hour of the day? Is it two past eleven? I'm not sure. But let's just accept this. You double park and wait for your next passenger to slide into the back seat. He looks at you, like he appreciates you and your taxi. He gives you his address. You start driving. A few words are exchanged. The weather, taxes, traffic. Then, you can tell it's coming. The inevitable conversation about the killer. Some bits of information, rumors, things overheard. You make a mental note of what you've heard. Who knows, he might come in handy. Your passenger doesn't make a sound for the next few minutes of your trip. We also got a clue up here, I'm not sure what that clue is, but it doesn't bother you. You have enough in your mind. Your investigation, the judge, Busset? Busset? I'm not sure what's the voice that. You're overcome with a craving to smoke. You nod slowly and glance at your passenger. Calm and still, he seems far away. Uh, having a good evening? Yes, very good. He slowly turns his head towards you and gives you an odd look, like he is disappointed you're talking to him. He watches you closely for another minute and turns back to look out the window. You keep your eyes on the road. The silence becomes heavy. All of a sudden, you feel a strange sense of camaraderie with your passenger. You look at him quickly in the rearview mirror. He doesn't look familiar at all, and yet, it's like you know him. A second later, an outside light shines on his face at a weird angle. It looks like he's smiling. A few seconds later, you drive down his street. He straightens up a bit. You park in front of a, the number he gave you. He pays his fare without words. The door sl opens slowly and he smiles at you. You can tell it comes from the bottom of his heart despite how uptight he is. 
You're a real swell guy. You weren't expecting that. By the time you collect your thoughts, your passenger is already far away. He disappears into a building. A moment goes by before you turn the key in the ignition. Alright, so we got some money for that. We have a tip as well, 290. Must have been from the only single line of dialogue we gave him. Alright, let's take it. 15 euros we made from that taxi, right? Alright, so we can now collect... There's a cat? What? Our, our fare is a cat? Or is that the lady with the cat? No, it's on two, two different... Uh, I don't know. Uh, let's collect the nearest passenger again. There's no point in going all the way... Oh, there's some guy up here. So oh, we can... Oh, okay. Alright. Uh... Okay, fair enough. Uh, where do I check inventory or something? Passy decks? Is that it? Oh, this is the passenger index. I get it. Okay. So you have met Sonny. Sonny thinks you're a swell guy. This is our boss. Okay. And there's some locked uh, points here. But I'm not sure what that means. Okay. Uh, no idea how to access that clue we just got. So we'll just continue playing. See what else we can get from this. Alright, let's pick up this uh, young lady here. Purva Rao. I'm headed to Charles de Gaulle Airport. That's a bit far off, isn't it? But uh, we can pick up another passenger at the airport, I'm almost certain. Alright, so 13.49 it is. I'm not sure if there's a fixed rate for this or something, but uh, probably. Your next passenger is alone and waiting for you on the sidewalk. She gets in the cab and whispers, Hello. She has no handbag or suitcase, just a small handmade Time with an Indian name printed on it. Charles de Gaulle, please. She is young, with a soft and slight accent. Her face shows no emotion. Her fingers play with a small gold chain around her neck. It is the only piece of jewelry she has on. You drive, glancing back at her from time to time. Her head seems to be elsewhere. Uh, shall we talk to her? Uh, yeah, why not? Everything alright, miss? She nods her head gently, cracking a tiny smile. It's really early. The first planes to come in are the worst. Everyone is exhausted and half asleep. Yes, exactly, and... She sighs. I must confess, I don't really want to go there. A tiny smile lights up her face for a split second before disappearing. Ah, family? My future husband well future I've never even met him her accent suddenly becomes stronger you know this habit well just before confiding in you passengers tend to relax into their natural accent I'm sure he's a great guy as they say here sadness appears in her voice but I don't know him at all my parents chose him it's crazy isn't it are you shocked? Well, uh, not really. I mean, uh, especially her name is Purva. I'm guessing she's from an Indian background or something. So I'm not really that shocked. Uh, I was... But I am kind of shocked because I don't, I don't approve of uh, arranged marriages, marriages. Although it's very traditional from where she comes from, still shocks me to this day. A sad smile washes briefly over her face. It's tradition. Or at least, used to be. My parents are a bit old school, even by current standards in India. Yeah, see, it's like... It still goes on, but uh, there are people that don't do it anymore, so it, I'm not sure how to comment on that. I chose to study here, and not in England, like my sisters. She flashes a smile. I fell in love with Paris, and decided to stay. I almost never go home. Actually, this is home now. Anyway, my parents insist I met him. Or I meet him. He decided to make the trip, saying he had the meeting as a pretext. Uh, it's, I can't, oh, I'm not gonna go when it's like, unacceptable. That sounds way too harsh. Uh, there's a smiley face here. It's hard to hold it against them. Yeah, but... 
I don't want to say that either. And I don't want to say nothing. Uh, I'll go into sin acceptable. No, you don't understand. This is just the way things are. Yeah, but this is the this is the thing I don't get. Like I know it's tradition and all, and it comes from a background of I don't know how many years, hundreds and hundreds of years. Same as the caste system they have in India. It's just fucked up, and uh, it's the way things are. But you can change it individually. Everyone has power to change it. I mean, uh, I don't. I, yeah, I mean it's hard, but come on. And I knew it would happen one day. They've been talking about it for ages. I try to avoid the subject. It's understandable from their perspective. I mean, it worked for them, right? You sense something bubbling up, anger, before she freezes. Some people refuse to let their emotions out. She slowly regains control of her body. What uh, day trips uh, you recommend outside Paris? Nearby. She nods. Versailles, of course. It's really beautiful. Definitely worth it. Her face lights up. Oh yes, perfect. I'm sure you'll like that. Oh, there's a Fontainebleau. I'm not sure if that's how you say it, but... There's a huge park, very wild. If he likes hiking... I don't really know. She smiles, shyly. You prefer to say nothing. The airport is not much further. Something about the young woman makes you feel uncomfortable. She looks as if she is about to scream, but is holding it in. Time passes and silence fills the cab. Which terminal? Your question startles her. Terminal C. 2C, I think. Uh, it's supposed to be a nice day out today. Uh, is it an Indian airline? Uh, I'm guessing he's coming from India, so I'm just gonna go, is it an Indian airline? Indeed. Then it's definitely 2C. The flights come in very early. Yes, very early. Thank you. You park the car in front of Terminal 2C. Your passenger grabs her sign and exits the cab. She pauses for a second, as if she were about to say something. Then she disappears. Alright, cool, so we made uh, we just made 15.37, we got less of a tip than we had the previous run, but uh, we'll take it. Okay, so I do think that's the time. Oh, hold on. The door suddenly opens and a woman gets in the back seat. Having a good night? Oh, sh that's Bosset. Oh. For a second, you freeze. It's one of the cops working on a judge's case. Oh, okay. So that's Bosset, okay. Oh, Busse. I'm just gonna call him Busse. She grims at you. Her voice creaks. You remember seeing her at the hospital. Something already bothered you about her there. You know, it's actually pretty crazy. For weeks, I've been saying to myself there's something off about you. Something not so nice. I dug around, mulled it over, bugged all my fellow cops about it. Before I was sure you lied to us. Uh, that's her. Keep going. She has a cold sneer in her face. I'm going to be frank with you. She leans over to you. I don't think you're the judge. Nah. I just can't picture it. She squints. Like she's trying to make you out from far away. Like you'd have gone to the extent of hurting yourself. Yeah. Between us, it's a bit of a stretch. She stares at you. But not enough of a stretch for my chief to stop going on and on about you. Seriously, he talks about you all the time. If I didn't know better, I think he had a crush on you. He smirks. No, no. I think he's more interested in your profile. In prison at 17? An icy chill fills your guts. And for murder, too. You open your mouth, but nothing comes out. Since you got out, you've kept a low profile, but you're lying about your name and your address. I checked. It's normal, you'd say. If they get word of your time served, no loan for your permit, no lease for your car. Meaning, no second chance at life. Her voice becomes softer, almost worn. I personally like guys who want a second chance. No, 
I like guys who fight for a second chance. Basically, I like guys who are willing to work for me. She leans forwards, her shining cat-like eyes narrowing. My chief wants to go to the prosecutor with a first and last name, with evidence. Actually, knowing him, he is not so hot on evidence. So, I'll give you info. Victims, suspects, medical reports, some photos that are a bit... He makes a gagging noise. You have to be discreet. Keep it between you and me. Interrogate. Ask questions. Dig around. Uh, I'm not a cop and I've never done this. I'm not gonna go, uh, I've never done this. She shrugs. Don't worry. You're already keener than half the squad. And don't forget. I'm not asking you to make an arrest and deliver the killer wrapped up with a bow in front of the station, okay? You're no Batman. You're just here to get me more information. She rummages around in her pockets for what seems like forever. Here, take my cards. I'll call you in three, four days, just to check in. We'll chat. And I'll let you know if I have any new info. She takes on a, dicta di a didactic uh, paternalistic tone, like she was giving you a list of recommendations for the hundredth time. Don't get caught, don't get arrested. Also, I wouldn't recommend trying to leave Paris. I know what you look like and I know who your friends are. You can either be the solution or the problem, my friends. It takes a minute to scan your face, your emotions. If I have to go, I'll go check in on you know who. Her smile is biting. That reminds me, she knows you've done time. You shake your head, she sneakers. Oh my little dirtbag, you cover your tracks well. I did, uh, let's, let's say nothing here. She acknowledges your silence with a nod. Okay, I think you've got a handle on our little deal. Any problems, I turn you in. I'll send you a picture to all my friends in the media and every asshole in Paris. Your picture with your name on it, your real name. Anyone close to you will have their places searched. They'll be put under a house arrest, 10 nights in jail. You have any idea how tense things are with that fucker's trial underway? You sigh. You know just what she's trying to get at. Come to think of it, your last names are almost the same. You could be brothers, actually. I'm nothing like that terrorist. Nothing like that son of a bitch. Okay, so there's someone... A uh, terrorist, maybe? Or a criminal? of some sorts that almost shares my last name? Could there be a relation between me and him? I'm not sure. But uh, I'm gonna go with, I'm nothing like that son of a bitch. He smiles. Let me tell you, with that face of yours and your handle, they'll welcome you with open arms. Now that you're insulting me now. He takes on a serious tone, business-like. I want to catch this killer personally, I want to drag him to court, ruin his fucking life, with a bang. I can't botch this case, you got me, and neither can you, right? Well, obviously. Well, great then. We see eye to eye. So you can just say you're my informant, my CI. He ripped open your guts. You saw your own insides. You were in a coma. Yeah. You have plenty of reasons to want to get back at him. She furrows her brow. Yeah, I think you're actually going to do what I tell you to do. You investigate, ask questions, listen to all the rumors, and you come up with a list of suspects. She lays her hand on the door handle and freezes. Oh, right. You don't get fired. Without this cab, you're worth nothing to me. You glare at her. I I'm not gonna go fucking bitch. For what it's worth, it was a pleasure not to be interrupted every other minute. You can't imagine how much I missed that at work. She puts up, puts her hand up, and you can hear the words behind it. This conversation never happened. I'll make sure you get more intel tomorrow. I'll find a way. Until then, not a word to anyone, obviously. Not a word. The door opens, squeaks, and slams shut. Fucking bitch. 
You sit alone for a while, teeth clenched, dry eyed, ears buzzing. Shit. On the back seat, the cop left a pile of papers. Shit. Key in the ignition, motor running. Radio on, crackles. You turn it off and start driving. By talking to passengers might unlock new documents and clues for your investigation. You will find them back at your studio after your shift. Okay, alright. We have six clues discovered available in your room. Alright. Let's continue, shall we? Have we gone back to our room or... Is our shift over? I think so. Also very interested, uh, very interesting she said we've committed murder when we were 17. That's very eerie. I guess that's why we're a major suspect in this case. Alright, so you take a second to enjoy the silence of your studio apartment. Outside, the city is slowly waking up. You can still hear the hum of the taxi buzzing in your ears. You throw the files Bousset uh, gave you on the table. On the wall, you hang up the big corkboard where you used to the where you used to pin up photos of your nephews. They've been gone since you got out of Your plan is simple. Jot down all the pieces of evidence and connect them to the suspect. The guilty party won't necessarily be the one with the most evidence against them, but the one with the most compelling evidence against them. It's like you're building a story about each suspect. Trying to understand their motives. Understand how he or she got into this situation. Steps in the hallway. They stop in front of your door, then move away. You sigh and get to work. Alright, so we have autopsy reports, victim number three, uh, given by Bousset. No, uh, victim number four and a killer case. Alright, let's investigate this first piece of evidence. Oh, so this takes time, look at that. On the right hand side. Let me just look up the board. Victim number two. And these are the suspects. Okay, let's let's begin with the suspects. Er uh, Hervé? How do you say that? How do you say his name? Hervé? Krayo? Not sure how you, I'm not sure how you say that. Uh, meter 77, homeless man with a unknown background, briefly worked for Charles uh, Beaugrain, Beaugrain, victim number two in the 90s, got health issues after Richtodin health scandal, a couple of arrests of, for breaking and entering. We have Salim Wadian, well-known lawyer from Saint, Queen, Saint Owen, defender of on the Duar case, defender of several molested kids in Poor Neighbors, was a promising football player when he was 10. Not sure why he's a suspect, but okay. Can we look at it? Uh, oh no, we, this is End of Night. Hold on. Oh, was this to highlight and... okay. And we have to connect them. Can we connect? Okay, not yet. Claudia Campus, medical examiner in Paris. Escaped from Argentina when she was young. Lost her parents to the Argentinian Junta. The process. Okay, not sure why she's a suspect either. And this guy is Pier Piero Bataz. Cop in Paris. That was a cop. Financial affairs. I two years ago, mom got health issues after Richtodin health scandal. Gay. In a relationship. Never disclosed this information at work. And we have Paul Marie Bragonard. Of a retired cop, joined the police in 1977, divorced from the judge, born in the French Antilles, uh, moved to mainland France in 1976. All right. And we have, oh, we could move. Oh, okay. We had the victim number two was a fierce politician. Uh, we don't have a politician here in these... Uh, Homeless guy, lawyer, the medical examiner, cop, and the retired cop. Okay. Not sure who this guy is. Alright, let's go back to the desk. Let's examine these reports one by one. We'll lose some time 
So it's currently a 7 to midnight. And if you examine this, it will be 38. Okay. Let's check this. Ulti. Wait. Oh. I just examined it. Alright. A picture of the crime scene. Oh. Does it really give me much time to look at it? It just disappears. Oh, this wasn't on the table before as well. Alright, okay, so we lose some more time with these evidence here. Let's uh, investigate these uh, autopsy reports. That's, there's no real information on them, but... Dossier... Okay, on the judge. New location discovered. Four new clues, okay. And how can I... Oh my god, alright. Okay, killer bites. Oh my god, let me just put these uh, somewhere they make sense. Uh, okay, so everyone's under a meter and eighty. Okay. So any of them could be the killer at this point. Message on crime scene. Time is up. Uh, okay. Message on the crime scene. One. Justice. Huh, okay. Message on crime scene. You deserve this. Why is this linked to these two people in concrete? Uh, I'm not sure. Yes, these are just the initial connections we've made. I'm not sure. Uh, weapon. Rare use. Rare gun, sorry. Used in the 70s. Yes, that makes sense with the, uh, the retired cop, I guess. But it could make sense with any of them. We just get a hold of them. Uh, killer left message in shock on, uh, first three crime scenes. Death equals exe execution. Killer knew the victims or researched them. Victims killed with bone bullets in the neck. No sign of violence. Okay. So they were like Hitman style, execution style. Maybe some uh, mob ties? Not sure. Okay, let's end the night. I'm not sure what to do with these so far. Let's just end the night. With a heavy hand, you wipe your tired face. You open the sofa bed and lie down. Currently half past five, you go to bed quite late. The events of the day th run through your heads. The streets, the passengers, their faces, their problems. You open one eye. Your attention turns to shouting upstairs, a door slamming. Typical. You get up quickly. And a few minutes later, you're outside of your studio. Alright, here we go. Second night. Uh, we have quite a few locations, but uh, we'll deal with this on the next episode. Let me just check this. So the gas station, we can put some... Uh, we can listen to the radio. Okay. A few people. Alright. We're going to continue, continue this on the next episode. I just want to take a quick break here just to say thank you for you guys watching, checking out the video. Uh, drop a like if you like the video and subscribe to the channel if you aren't so already. It would uh, help me out a great amount. Thank you so much guys and I'll see you all in the next episode. Bye bye!